Are you a good, bad or excellent CRA? More after the break. Hello and welcome to our GCP Mindset channel. We've had a lot of requests for this topic, so here we go. Before we go right into it, please watch our previous videos on what a CRA is and what the role entails in clinical research using the link above. Clinical monitoring is essential in clinical trials in ensuring the safety of the participants is guaranteed, the data collected is of high quality and integrity, and that the clinical study is going according to the plan, protocols, regulations, national laws, all the standards and even the SOPs. Clinical monitoring costs account for 30 to 70% of the entire clinical study and this budget, unfortunately, can be easily misspent or thrown down the drain depending on how good and well-trained the clinical monitor is. In the ICGCP, you'll find the responsibilities of a monitor, including the purpose, the selection, qualifications of the monitors, and the extent and nature of monitoring and procedures in detail, since clinical monitors play such a delicate role in ensuring compliance, safety, and data integrity. It's the duty of a CRA to support the sponsor in several activities, from site selection, site initiation, patient recruitment, routine monitoring visits, source data verification, reviewing critical documents such as informed consent forms, serious adverse event reports, investigator site files, drug accountability, site training, query management, problem solving, and also maintaining site relationships. This may seem like a lot, right? And the truth is, it can be, depending on the CRA's level of competence. But an excellent monitor is excited about all of the above named tasks because let's face it, it's such a dynamic role, hence never boring. To be able to seamlessly perform these tasks, point number one, having the right qualifications will be a good start. Depending on whether you get into clinical monitoring in the EU or in the US, a general understanding of clinical research or a life science background is a good start. This is because clinical monitors come across a lot of medical and scientific terms. They involve themselves in discussions with those in medical professions such as investigators, study nurses, therefore competence in reading and understanding medical records such as ECGs, lab reports, pathology reports and so on from source data is part of CRA's daily activities. However, reading and writing is not as essential as the communication with the site staff. Site staff are usually extremely busy, especially when it comes to dealing with incompetent people that can be a waste of their time. Hence, the monitoring staff need to be able to explain complex topics, but in a simple way, give a well-educated impression and provide the message of, I want to help you. Our point number two goes to problem solving. Problem solving is an excellent skill to have as good CRA. During monitoring activities on the site, we have two types of CRAs. One that visits the site with approach to look for problems and document them in the reports, and one that visits the site in the mindset of, I'm there to support the site. An excellent monitor will not only document the findings, but they'll go an extra mile to find solutions to the problems found so that to avoid future similar issues from occurring something we call corrective and preventive actions, or CAPAs. CAPAs are aimed at preventing future mistakes, saving time and money in the long run. Our third point on recognizing a bad versus a good CRA, you'll find that a good CRA will make themselves familiar with the regulatory aspects of the study they're working on. On the other hand, an excellent CRA will go the extra mile and ensure they're also aware of country-specific regulations and laws specific to their location. This includes language skills, for example, a CRA living and working in Germany that also speaks German. If working on a site in Denmark, they should ensure that they're able to communicate in the local language and also ensure that they know the national laws and regulations specific to Denmark. Monitoring visits are part of the daily life for clinical monitors. Therefore, traveling is a must for CRAs. A monitor that does not like traveling is not in the right career choice. This brings us to point number four, organization skills of a CRA. 
During monitoring visits, CRAs review a lot of documents and collect signatures. Therefore, being well prepared, proactive, pragmatic but thorough in this role, for example during pre-study visits or site selection visits, will be taken seriously by excellent CRAs so as to avoid selecting the wrong sites that may cause a lot of problems down the lane such as not enrolling patients, enrolling the wrong patients or even collecting dirty data. Being well organized also means catching and preventing possible errors before it's too late. A very important organizational skill often is lacking is to invest more time at the very beginning, for example, in training, building up relationships, familiarizing with study-specific processes. This will save a lot of time later on. Clinical monitoring staff who never have time to prepare well due to limited time availability will easily set themselves for failure because they just were not willing to invest the time at the beginning. Our last but not least point, number five, that distinguishes excellent CRAs from bad or good CRAs is emotional intelligence. This role fits those that consider themselves a people person. An excellent monitor should be friendly to approach, but also maintain a high level of professionalism, observing all the rules of conduct, showing respect towards the site staff, and overall having a good attitude as we know how challenging some studies can be, or even that a trial site such as hospitals may run into panic situations, leaving site staff with not enough time to attend to the CRA, it's often important for a CRA in such situations to remain calm, show respect and patience. Take a guess, which of these types of CRAs could you imagine the site staff would be more willing to work hard for and provide good quality data for? A nice and likeable person, or an unpleasant control freak? We're all social animals. To those we like, we tend to go an extra mile for, and this is the same scenario here. Within this study, the site staff will always try to perform better for a nice CRA than for a CRA focused only on controlling. And with that, we hope that these points give you a good distinction between what kind of a CRA can be involved in a clinical study. It's important for the sponsor of a clinical trial to select the right CRAs for the study. As you've heard, it's not easy, but it's possible. If unsure, get in touch using the comments below, drop us an email via the links in the description, and we will be happy to support you with the right clinical monitoring approach and the right mindset. See you next time. Goodbye. Hey there. Don't forget, like and subscribe. But most importantly, click that bell so you never miss another video.